Hi, Blast Pop here. Today I'm taking a look at the Deluxe Edition of Paths of Glory by Tedes Racer. Uh, this game originally was to be published, from what I understand, by the Avalon Hill Game Company before they were bought by Hasbro. Uh, GMT, once Ted regained the rights, uh, moved over to GMT, and it's been in their stable ever since. Uh, this is one of the classic car-driven games, and despite the fact that it's been published for over 20 years, or nearly 20 years, uh, the game has held up reasonably well, um, well again, without much gameplay and uh, discussion and, and strategy um, articles and such, um, is bound to have some of its shortcomings figured out, but regardless of what the historical value of it is, and I think it's pretty good. Um, it's a great game. Uh, it has, I think, one of the more striking Roger McGowan covers. Um, it just captures the breadth and the intensity, not only on a tactical level, but on a strategic level. Because if you take a look at the figures for the tactical part of it and the single soldier, uh, along with all the various battles that were part of the First World War. This is one of GMT's hard nuclear proof games boxes. Uh, I can really give it a good ding and dent and it will survive nicely. It's a two inch box. And this is sports two maps actually. Uh, you had a deluxe version map and then also a copy of the original map on the back. So, regardless of your preference, they have you covered. This is an example of the new the new map. And uh, also, um, gives you a sample of one of the cards. And uh, tells you about the solitaire suitability, which is considered high. And then the complexity is on the low scale of the medium area. Also included... 2d6, some baggies, rules of play, well, actually here I'll take a look at the cards, there's a deck of cards for the allied and the central powers, and then there's more cards here which I believe may be errata cards, I haven't found out whether this is in fact the case or they're optional cards, although the numbers are fairly low so I'm suspecting that these might be errata cards. Uh, each card contains what part of the game it, it is part of, in this case, the mobilization, uh, the name of the title, uh, the impact or effects, uh, if you take replacements, how that card, what it gives you, the number of strategy points, and uh, also the strategic um, resource value, so you, whether you can move units around the board longer distances and stuff is a way of doing that. So you can take the card in, in one of several ways, and so how it, each card is used is dependent on when it comes up in the game, but also what the given situation is and what your strategy is. So it gives you a, a number of options. There's a deck for each player. Nicely done. They look very similar to the first edition. Um, getting to the rules, nicely illustrated in color, and actually says it's, it's actually the ops value I misspoke before. So included is a double-sided map, two counter sheets, three player aid cards, uh, one rules book, which is this, 130 strategy cards in the 2d6. Uh, the units come in two sizes, and then they, sh they show you samples of them here and what all the values uh, represent. Tells you how to set up your initial strategy cards, your sequence of play. I like the nice white 
matte finish with some color and wide two columns very easy on the eyes we have mandated offensives the action phase the actual use of the strategy cards uh, stacking combat and movement not a lot of illustrations but still not difficult detailed examples combat examples so you get a sense of what you can do strategic redeployment supply forts war and peace replacements card notes a lot of cards so this goes on for several pages uh, designer's notes extended example of play using the new graphics i believe it's essentially the same example of play that was used previous editions but is only updated to reflect any corrections and graphics and it goes on and uh mighty handy as a matter of fact it might be advisable even if you're thinking about picking this game up to run through the example of play as you uh set it up and follow it along and then take it on from there and then the unit set up adding more paths to your deck which is an optional card usage exceptions Special rules for the Near East, which are also included on this map, just not Europe. And then the Deluxe Developers Edition, along with a nice index to help you find what you're looking for. And finally, your credits. It weighs in, including cover, at 40 pages. Well done. You have your War Status Track. And you have your victory points track. I suggest you photocopy these so you can play and not be limited to one usage. And, or put it in a uh, protector so you can use erasable markers. A reinforcements card for use of both players, single sided. Each player gets a set of combat charts and terrain effects charts. Replacements, special rules for 1914, because there are several. And the victory point table. Again, both players receive a set. Keeps play moving along smartly. Two counter sheets. First one, please uh, pause as needed if you want to take a longer look at this. And all the armies are in bigger counters, which are probably 7 eighths inch counters. They're good size counters. And you can see on the same sheet there's the smaller coral size units, which com typically will, can compose the larger units and sometimes operate independently on the board. The back side of the same counter sheet. And your last counter sheet. Core size units along with entrenchments, control markers, demoralization, or destroyed I should say, markers. And your backside of the counters. Now, as I had mentioned previously in this video, there are two maps. This is the newer map for the Deluxe Edition, which is interesting. It does have a certain period feel to it. Um, I'll have to give it a try to to determine where I stand on this. I have kind of mixed emotions on changing the map, but there's nothing wrong with including a second map, in essence, on the same piece of 
mounted board. Makes a lot of sense, I think. You have your turn record track over here. You have your spaces, um, fortifications, Paris, this is Germany. Germany's a little bit dark print, but it's perfectly readable. It's a little more subdued map. It does also have some relief uh, of the terrain on the board, so it's not strictly a political map. And then off to the lower right here, you have the Near East, which is its own separate little war that's a sideshow for the entire war. In addition, you have record tracks here, and then Russian capitulation, commitment for U.S., and each side also has an action round um, chart to keep track of what actions you can do in what order. There are some limitations. Now, I will show you the existing map that has been reprinted and also acts as a comparison to what was previously available. Nice heavy mounted board. I like it. And I'm not going to go into the as much detail. It contains essentially the same information. It's got a brighter look to it. It's more eye-popping in that regard. I think it's well printed. It's got nice, nice looking graphics. And at this point, I'm still kind of preferential to the old map. Uh, I'm a traditionalist, I guess. In any case, you know, you've got the option. It's your game. You can play with it any way you want. So this has been. The new deluxe edition of Paths of Glory by GMT Games, designed by Ted S. Racer. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Blast Pop. Bye.